Record, record. Hey, I'm at school. This one's from school, guys. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through deploying to Heroku with a full-on Mern stack. So, let's go uh, into our reading books assignment, which should be put together for you. Um, this is actually a very, very simple process, but I'm going to walk you through. So, you can see I am in the server side right now. I'm going to get a knit. And now I have a Git remote in here. Now let's do Heroku create. And we'll get a funny name. Our funny name is Cryptic Tayaga. Hmm. Uh, cool, so now let's go navigate to the Heroku dashboard. If I could open this somewhere. Be nice if my Chrome worked. Hey, there we go. So, Cryptic Tayaga, let's go grab the Git remote from here so we can add it to our repository. And there we go. Okay, so go to your Deploy tab. We're gonna go grab this line right here, Heroku Git remote, Cryptic. And I'm gonna paste that right into my terminal. And I've set my Git remote. Uh, cool, so let's go back to our Heroku dashboard. And under Resources, we're gonna go find MongoLab. So M Lab MongoDB, and we have it. Let's grab the free provisionary one. And there we go. We have added M Lab to our Heroku repository. And you can go in here and you can see the creds, but we don't actually need any of this for our deployment. So if we go back here, we can see if we open this up that we have everything we need right here. So uh, we're setting our port to process ENV port, and then down here we're using Mongo Connect to do process ENV MongoDB URI, and that is literally all we need right there. You'll notice we also have a proc file which has web npm run server in it. Uh, this may not be necessary. Heroku with the build packs in the back does a lot of this for you, um, but at the same time, you might wanna just put it in to make sure. So while I am still on the server side, I'm going to run yarn build. If I open this up, we can see that I'm going to get my build made, right? Yeah, there's my build. So all my static assets have been made for my deployment. And creating optimized builds, sweet. So one more thing to do, that is git add, which is probably going to take a heck of long because I'm not ignoring my node modules. Do as I say, not as I do. That's, that's the real lesson from this class. <laughs> Nothing like deploying my node modules. It'll actually throw away your node modules and then recreate them Because I don't care about my GitHub right now. I only care about Heroku. And seeing whether this will work. And then we can do a seed. Hey, it's done. So git commit m add app. That's a great commit message. Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, and then, now that we have this, we can do, oh, look at all those node modules. Wow, that's a lot of crap. Okay, so now let's do git push Heroku master. And this will take a while because we have a little bit more to do since we have the client and the server side going. It's gonna compress all my objects and write my objects. Oh, the internet here is so nice and fast. Wow, that was good. Okay, so hopefully this will work because we have the weird firewall issue here, but I'm gonna walk you guys all through this today. I guess I'm kind of talking into the ether because this will be on YouTube, but whatever. So, remote building source, Node.js app detected, that is good. We should get a proc file warning too. Fetching packages, give me my packages. Um, incompatible with this module, that's fine. Proc file declare type web, perfect, and compressing. So one thing that a few people in the class have run into recently is that they've grabbed this bottom link here, and that's actually a link to your Git remote, your actual uh, Git initialization of your app. We wanna grab this one right here. But you can always do this <laughs> after you've Heroku created and do Heroku open. Oh, that's not how you spell open. And if stuff doesn't yay so there's my uh, app deployed on Heroku with full-on Mern so you'll notice that there's nothing in here so my app should work so chicken by chicken with a synopsis of chicken is going to be submitted 
and pinned over here. And if we click on it, we can go to an actual view of the ID and we should be able to get rid of it. So the problem now is that we don't have our seeds in there. So in order to do that, we would normally run yarn seed. Heroku gives us the ability to use anything we want with yarn by doing Heroku run first. So Heroku run yarn seed. We'll run the yarn seed on cryptic taiga. Ty ty I don't know. I, I don't know that word. And once that little spinning doodad goes away, we should have a few articles in our database. I think I jinxed it. I wish I prepared a joke for this downtime, but I, I did it. Got any jokes? Uh, <clears throat> knock knock. Two. No, it's to whom. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really bad one. I know. It's okay. Uh, so my seed is taking forever. Maybe my seed. It's a, it's a dad. It's a dad. This is your book. Yeah, yeah, it's a perfect one for an English teacher. Uh, no, my, my my dad is like one of those dad joke people. And it's like, how do you stop a charging bull? Take away his credit card. <laughs> like, oh, God. Like the tip. Oh, so there we go. So it looks like my uh, Heroku Run Yarn Seed is not going to work from here. So that is probably what the firewall is doing. But it doesn't matter because our deploy worked. Everything is working in our database. Our Mongo is working. We can see, because we can go in here and I can make another book called Chicken, spelled incorrectly like usual. And then I can say, hey, it's a synopsis of a random string of garbage. We get our stuff. And then if I go and I navigate back here and reload, hey, my stuff is still there. So our deploy with MongoLab uh, in a full Mern stack works from inside the building. Your yarn seed, on the other hand, does not. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, one more tutorial down. Uh, zero more to go. Peace. I always say peace way before I actually stop the thing, which is which is.